you know, I'm, I'm very Googleable. I don't think that I'm ever going to escape what I did. A Las Vegas man who pleaded guilty to his role in the January 6th storming of the U.S. Capitol now is sharing his side of the story. Fox I reported on the arrest of Nate DeGrave in January of 2021, his plea deal in June of 2022, and now his release from custody. Fox I's Kim Passoff has followed this since the beginning. She spoke with him one-on-one. -on -one. She joins us now with more on what he had to say. Kim? Yeah, Nate DeGrave was charged with conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding and assaulting, resisting, or impeding officers. He took a plea deal in a max of five years and was released in December. He says that he never dreamed he was going to to a Trump rally would result in serving in time in federal prison, and he was caught up in the moment and in over his head. It was kind of just like we were just there for clout. We wanted to get footage. We were flexing on social media, posting it online. Obviously, if we knew that you know, we'd be charged and going to prison, we probably wouldn't have put anything online. Nate DeGrave moved to Vegas from Philadelphia six years ago to build a marketing business and social media presence, once calling himself the king of Las Vegas. We spoke to him as he is now trying to rebuild his life. He stepped out of a work conference at the Venetian for our interview. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I've never had a parking ticket. I never broken the law. I've always been on the side of law enforcement. He says a social media friend, Ronnie Sandlin, posted he was going to D.C. for the biggest Trump rally ever and asked if he wanted to join. Putting in 12-hour days, 14-hour days in my business. So I figured hey, it would be a great opportunity to, to connect with him finally and just get away for a couple days. The plan? To take videos, never to stop certification of the election. The thought of going inside never even crossed our mind. It was just not something that we were planning to do. They broke the glass. But as lawmakers sheltered inside, DeGrave did take part in the storming of the Capitol. When we walked up to the Capitol and we saw people pouring inside, Salem had a very expensive Nikon camera. We had our boom mics. We had our GoPros. And the intention was to film. The government says he did much more than just record. They say this is him, fists up. They say he illegally pushed past barricades and officers to get into the Capitol building, then pushed against the officers to get into the Senate gallery. Once I left the Capitol, I, I realized I probably shouldn't have gone as far as I did. And obviously, it was an obvious mistake. I mean, we all know that. After serving a year in federal lockup and a year in home confinement, he hopes not to continue to be judged by his actions that day for the rest of his life. There might be a certain subset of people that can see past it, and then there will be those that don't. And DeGrave is now running a company called Achieve AI, helping businesses integrate AI with their operations. He's still a big Trump supporter, but you won't find him at any political rallies. He says if he does get involved in politics again, it is going to be on an official basis, perhaps running for office at some level in the future. In January, three years after the riot, the U.S. Attorney's Office for Washington, D.C. shared these statistics. Nearly 1,300 defendants have been charged across nearly all 50 states. The crimes they're accused of range from seriously injuring police officers to conspiracy to obstructing congressional proceedings. Roughly 750 have been sentenced for criminal activity, with more than 460 serving prison time.